so much red. Way too much red. I like the red. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the Charming Analysis Podcast. I'm Mari. I'm Jay, and if it's anything from Mari's side, this is going to be a really heavy heavy podcast <laughs> yes and also i gotta close the fucking door because we left it open <laughs> <laughs> sorry i just you, realized that like, you ran to i love the way you wobble shut up i love the way you wobble run it's so cute you are such a booty looks like you got shit in your pants shut <laughs> up <laughs> anyway um for today's podcast i'm not gonna lie we really have been going into these movies blind. It's been a crazy time, hasn't it? Yeah, this is the, our only our second fucking podcast, mm-hmm. and shit's already hitting the fan. Yeah. So as it should, you know. Yeah, but I was not expecting this movie to be so heavy because literally, we none of the movies we picked this year we really know anything about. So I'm, I, we're basically going into all these blind. So, today we're going to be talking about Gerald's Game. So, why don't you explain what Gerald's Game is about, honey? Uh, it's about a, a man and a woman. Uh, they go out and have, like, they thinking that, that they're going to rejuvenate their marriage by having a very uh, sexual weekend out. And uh, turns out that doesn't happen. The guy ends up dying from a heart attack while the wife is still cuffed to the bed in a sex game. And she has to figure out how to get out of there before she dies. Because she's... It's a survival horror, you would say. But it's also a very psychological, like, survival horror. Yeah, because I'm, like, looking at the description for it. Because I have the description pulled up for this. First off, this movie came out 2017. Mm -hmm. So it's not that old. This is, like, a Netflix movie original from what I'm looking up. And, um... I'm going to look at that video when we're done all this shit. But don't say anything. Anyway, um... So yeah, basically from what is being told to us, it's a menacing, psychological, and horrific horror film. It's a horror slash thriller kind of thing. But um, I will say this before we get into this. Because this video is probably going to be age-restricted. Yep. Very heavily. Because I was not expecting this to be as intense as it was. So... Warning for anyone who watches this video. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of SA implied and mentioned in this. Along with a lot of horrific and traumatic experiences. SA, um, SA topics of rape and like all this stuff. Incest is also involved in this. I mean, if any of those trigger you... Um, Do not watch don't this. Don't watch it. Or the movie. To be honest, as someone who's went through all of that before, it's more tasteful uh, because it is all from the victim's perspective and how they, like... Deal with the whole dealt thing. Dealt with it and how they're dealing with, like, all this trauma when they're going through such a horrific event. So Yes. It's pretty much... I don't know, it's one of the more, it's like one of the most tasteful ways I've ever seen, like, I guess, like, I don't want to say, like, rape horror, but, like, I want to say, like, I guess. A survivor's perspective. Survivor's perspective. It's, it's like, I don't know. I I think it's one of the best iterations I've seen from a survivor's perspective. Granted, I've not seen the, um, I guess the ultimate one, which we're probably going to add to a later Halloween List called I Spit on Your Grave, which is a revenge rape story, but... No, my. But, like, I mean, I haven't seen that one, but I don't know. I think this one, like... Is a pretty tough contender. So, if if you cannot handle stuff like essay, incest, rape, grape, 
whatever the fuck we're going to call it. Uh, might as well. You might as well age restrict this video. This video is definitely going to be age restricted. <laughs> so if you, ha- if you don't like any of these topics before we go into this, I'm putting a lot of warnings so that way people don't go into it and realize, oh shit, I shouldn't be watching this. So that yeah. there's a reason I'm doing this. This one's definitely going to be age restricted. Might be his, might be like Stephen King's one of his more adult works. I would say. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Trigger warning: mm-hmm. If any of these things bother you in any way, don't watch this video or the movie. Yeah. I'm saying this. This is my third time I'm fucking saying it. This is the one. The one times I'm glad I repeat myself. Okay. Okay. So what did you like about it? I want you to go first. What did I like about it? You go first. Because I, I want you to go first. I liked the story. I really did. I liked that, like, I liked the way that, like, um, the story was handled, even though she had to, like, re, like, re just, like, had to go back and face those memories again. Of course, she would face those memory memories during, like, a flight or fight response. Fight or flight, but whatever. Yeah, and have to rethink what happened and everything, especially how she got there in that position in the first place. Um, but, yeah, to think, like, all all around, like, where, where, like, how it tells it and everything. I think it was, like, you know, well, it was tastefully done. It's not for any, like, shock value or anything. Yeah, like they're that. basically... But, like, the most shocking thing in this movie is, like, her, I guess, degloving her hand. But, like, I've, s- <laughs> but I've seen that in so many, like, I guess, gore, con- like, gore... F- content. Like, gore content movies, all that stuff. So it's not really all that shocking to me. Like, to... To think that that was the one that was making me squirm because I think anything to do with like the wrist or like the eyes or anything like sensitive is like gonna be squirmish to some people. Yeah. But um, I thought that like you know the story and like how she was like dealing with all this like in a very desperate situation, I think was done really tastefully and I don't know like. I can also say that, like, the the lighting about, like, how this story is told pretty much in this one um, vacation spot. Yeah. I think, especially because then she keeps on going to the present and then back in the past and then the present again and, you know, the history that's happened around this house. I think it's very, very effective. Um, definitely, I definitely. I wish more psychological horrors would just be about, like, in one location. But, um, or not more of, I guess, like, more of a setting. Like, if you have one setting and you do, like, a psychological horror really well, I think that's what amps it up a lot more. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, it's just, you know, it's this woman's mind just, like, going all over the place. And it's, like... Pretty much. Pretty much. And she's talking to her, to her dead husband. And, and also herself. And talking to herself. Also talking to her father. And it's, like... Also talking to a fucking dog. Well, yeah, but, like... In a sense. Yeah. And then you realize that the dog probably was never really there. <laughs> In a way. Or kind of was there, but... Kind of was there, but... I don't know. Um, it, it's all implied like you know the killer was out there but maybe it happened a different way you never know like what will happen and that's the good thing about like horror you never know what truly happens yeah you, you can get implications but you can't really get the full story which is yeah. one of the downsides of horror in my opinion like you don't really get a concrete answer you kind of get like a implied or like a guess at it's what a happened. mystery. It's, it's mystery. a mystery. I like that you just don't like mystery. I don't mind mystery. You just don't mind mystery. It's like so everything needs to be answered. How about some things just don't need to be answered? Well, I understand that, but it's just like it. Some part of me wants it to be answered, but at the same time, like if you actually saw the guy, like actually, like, like actually, bur- like mutilating this corpse, I don't think it would have been any better. Yeah, it would like, have would been. Like, wouldn't you have wanted that? Does that, no. that? That solves your mystery. Then you no. get to see that on screen. No. Exactly. So. Anyway. Um, basically, what I thought about this movie. Um, I will admit, it was very intense. But the subject matter in its, in and of itself because is Because Mari's intense. a little oofu baby. Okay, <laughs> stop. 
We gotta be serious about this. Because Mari is like uh, the sweetest person ever alive and does not want to see stuff like this. <laughs> but sometimes we gotta see it. But um, this was a bit intense. But yeah. for the subject matter, it's understandable because it's is this basic... the most intense movie you've seen that I've shown you. It's up there. It's up there. It's up there. But. What's what's the one that you'll never cross? I guess Jay, I'm not talking about this right now. We we're, uh, we're talking. I'm just trying to think because I'm like going through my head like of like not horror movies but just like stuff that you've seen. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's up there with one of the more disturbing ones I've seen. Well, what's another one? I guess like just one other movie that you think is disturbing or more disturbing than this i still thought the original pet cemetery was intense but like oh, a the bit guy, up there <laughs> oh because the kid the kid hit. got hit yeah. the trauma the trauma from that oh my gosh and i like, cried and like the and then the kid's father going up to like the coffin and crying yeah like, like that was intense <laughs> yeah these, Mari the, does not like to see children die and i don't know other stuff like that gore but, well, some gore. It depends. But you, um, you turned right away when she started cutting there. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't watch it. Like, literally <laughs> when she was, I guess, degloving her hand is what you said. Yeah. But, like, when I, when I saw that, I was like, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm not looking at this. Yeah. No, thank you. I am not going to be traumatized by this. Yeah. Nope, 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 nope. Honestly, I thought her hand was going to turn into a skeleton because that's how normal Why, it Bean? But it Stop. didn't. But it didn't. She I got the, know. She got, like, you know, she got arthritis, severe nerve pain in there for the rest of her life. But yeah, but at least she, she's, she's still alive. She's still alive. She lived. To me, this is one of those movies to where... I'm trying to figure out the best way to explain this. I probably am not explaining this. It's to, a to psychological it's, horror. It's a psycholo- psychological more thriller than horror. I would yeah, say. basically more thriller. thriller that evolves around essay. And if you don't like that, you're not gonna like that. But I like that. <laughs> I liked it. I liked the way it was told. I liked the way it was shot. I did think. Um, think look at the uh, director's name because the director's name sounds familiar. Um, um, what's his name? Let me see. Director's name. I'm looking. Will you give me a second? Hold on. Um, Mike Flanagan. Let me click on his name. Let me sh- okay, let me- okay. Hold on. What else has he done? Let me see. The Haunting of Hill House. Oh, no wonder then. Midnight Mass, The Midnight Club, Doctor Sleep. Oh, no wonder he he's a fucking Stephen King fanatic. Okay. Well, or no, he's a very psychological thriller fanatic. Like, fanatic. He loves his he loves his psychological thriller. I've seen I like swear, you're I've seen <laughs> three episodes of Haunting of Hill House, and trust me, that is that is up there with them. I will. Why do I feel like I, this... I probably we maybe we'll see it one day, but it's really abstract. It's really like I guarantee you, this video is mostly going to be you talking and me just being like, uh huh, uh huh, definitely. I remember. Uh-huh. Um, oh no, I remember this one thing that stuck with. It's not a major spoiler of Haunting of Hill House. It's just like a little little subplot that happens. I remember this one where um, a girl, um, one of the one of the characters. Um, she she was she grew up to be a a mortuer um mortitioner mortitioner and she uh mortimer 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 okay uh, she she grew up to be a, a mortitioner a mortitioner because she i think like her one of her family members died and she was like scared to see the body until she actually saw it and like it was all made up and like it was all pretty and stuff like that but she was scared of death as a child because her like she found like some kittens and she wanted to raise them but the kittens end up dying and like she's holding the kitten like the dead kitten up to her and and she thinks she sees it moving but then it realizes that it's a bug crawling out of its mouth and ew <laughs> me this is nothing to do with this yeah but it's like a psychological horror like that oh it's good like, lord you know it's weird it's weird and stuff yeah and that he i was like no wonder he sounds familiar so it's like i will a lot s- of people love mm. like a lot of people love this guy's like psychological horror he also did um 
I think he also did Doctor Sleep, right? Yes. Yeah, that's a, I think that's the one that's like tied to The Shining. So yeah, I will say this though, um, which will probably be another movie that you're gonna watch. <laughs> Jay, you're <laughs> this move. This podcast is mostly you it's talking. It's just mostly me because I love psychological horror. Yeah, and I'm just more like just sitting in the corner, just trying to understand. Yeah, just trying and to not offend symbolism, anybody. But it's scary. It's scary, but I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> but for the the type of content that it was, I feel like they did handle it pretty well. Like they didn't sugarcoat it, but they didn't like they didn't baby like, the person. They didn't baby the whole thing. They, they didn't, basically like, they weren't exploitative with it. They, yeah, they're not like oh, let me show you actually like what. Let me like, show frame you by actually frame what happened. Let me show you actually fucking this girl. Like I, I they I basically didn't need to see that. they basically just like told it in a mature way that wasn't degrading for the person and it yeah. wasn't like but basically they were telling it how it is but not going too crazy over it they basically just told it how it was without going explicit about it and i will admit i did like how they tackled that and stuff like that like this is a very heavy topic in a sense mm. to like would do you for watch film. more films like this it would entirely <laughs> depend like, this one at least had a happy ending, which did genuinely make me happy. Okay. It did make me feel better that she and at least... And that's all that matters. <laughs> Stop it. But it's just one of those things to where I'm honestly surprised that um, this was talked about. Mm-hmm. And this was, like, a movie that Netflix made. But, like, 2017, that's crazy. But yeah. So... I guess, since we're talking about psychological, do you think the dog in this was a metaphor for something? That was probably a metaphor for the killer, I guess. Do you or think the basically ki- the killer and the dog are the, the same thing? The killer was a metaphor for the Grim Reaper, so I don't even know what the, like what's going on. I don't know. Stephen King likes to add all these, like, all these, like, cryptic and weird and like symbolism of like something can be one thing but then they can represent both things but then they represent neither and uh, it, I don't I'm know. just curious what I your thoughts know, are because I feel like the dog kind of represents like half of the Grim Reaper because it's like basically death. like or like death in itself I feel like the dog in this basically represented death itself because the, the corpse maybe, was the maybe, corpse was basically decomposed yeah, by the end but of this. i guess but you know maybe or maybe we'll just watch a very long analysis video of it. <laughs> why do i feel like that's what's, what's going to happen after this probably insert us watching analysis video and be like oh now i get it no now you get it or maybe it was in the book i don't know i don't know but like i've i'm not that big into stephen king but i will admit some of his work is good and i thought you liked it I did. I thought it was all right. Like I didn't think it was a bad movie. I did think it was all right. Like I didn't mind it. It's one of the better ones I think he's done. Mm-hmm. But I don't know really where to place this one. Oh, honestly, man. like out of Stephen King's movies. But to me, this is one of those movies to where I think they told What's the other it effectively. Pet Cemetery and we've watched a few of Cujo. We watched Cujo. We watched the Maximum Overdrive, which that one I was surprised. That was, that was, that was boring. That was boring. But it's the only um, one he ever directed, I think. <laughs> that's actually sad. Um, shit. Anyway. Children of the Corn, I think that was Stephen King, was it? I don't know, I honey. I so. I don't know. There was anyway, like a lot of movies we watched for his. And we're not even done. All of his movies, because yeah. there's a lot more to be fucking. There's too many. How many movies have you had of your books done, dude? And then we gotta look How at... How many? Well, and then we gotta look at, like, other, like, stuff that he I wrote like that isn't horror-related. I feel like we... Like, he did been. Stand By Me. I, th- I feel like we have barely talked about Gerald's game. And he did Stand By Me and, like, Shaw... Was she Shawshank Redemption, I think? I don't know. He's, he's like... He, like, does all of these other stuff. Like, he does, like, crime and, like prison stuff and all like, i don't know he's done so much anyway um yeah let's go back to, That's what I'm trying to tell gerald's you, like, game like normally i i don't know like this. i'm just like comparing it to others i think this Bean. is probably one of his better films i think this is his best film that i've seen of his really yeah this is his best film in your opinion i don't know i'll put it over it it's just like really? spooky imagery to me 
This oh is actual goodness. psychological shit I like, love. Like, normally I'm the one that deviates from the shit. I find it funny that you're deviating from it. It's like, know. damn. I liked the movie. And normally when I like a movie, You it's deviate like, into other things, which is fine. I, I just compare it to other stuff that's like... The best way to explain it, I yeah. guess. But, um... So I guess, what did you think of, um... I guess, how did you think of, like, how the story went after, like... Um, she decides she's gonna cut her declove her hand and like set herself free from the whole thing. Like, what did you think of it? Cause Better I, than giving up. <laughs> yeah, but I like that. Um, I lo- I found it interesting that I'm gonna call it the Red World because that's kind of what it essentially was. But Dude, this is part of the Stephen King mythos. Like, the- oh my gosh, Jay! My goodness. Apparently, this is all connected in some way. We are not talking about this right now. We can talk about your Stephen King mythos later. (laughs) Anyway, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just like, honey. Okay, okay, okay. Anyway, this is one of those movies to where I feel like... um, Shit, I lost my train of thought for a second. Something. Fuck. Um, Okay, so I guess one thing I do want to ask is, what did you think of the last, I guess, like, 20 minutes of like the movie because I feel like the last 20 minutes is like the best of the movie. Okay. Literally after she does the thing with her I hand. I liked all the movie. I liked the whole movie. I so. thought the movie was compelling, but I think my favorite part was the last bit when she was actually trying to escape because she basically confronts the killer. <laughs> and I legit like this dude. I don't know who the fuck they casted to play this man, but I think it's just makeup. Honey. This man was so fucking tall! He was like seven foot! And like, I don't know what they did. Because like, legit, he was so creepy. Even when he was like in the red light, he was insanely creepy. The one part of the movie I was not expecting was him just going up to her, putting his arm around her while she's driving, and whispers, Mouse. And then car crash. I don't think that. Fucking think that car was crash. A dream. You thought that was a dream? I think that was just a hallucination. M- must have been a really bad one, cause legit, yeah. like that was insanity in and of itself. I was just like, damn. But anyway, um, God, I am tired. <laughs> I feel like we have rambled. Yeah, we rambled. We What's rambled. your rating? What's your rating of this movie? This is a twenty-two minutes of us rambling. Heck, I don't even know if we're even going to post this one at this point, but we'll see. Um, I would probably give Gerald's game... I will say this, though. They did tackle a pretty intense topic as well as they could. Yeah. Pretty much, I think, one of the better interpretations for a victim story, which I that, thought... it deserves an A. <laughs> Can I finish? <laughs> okay. I swear, honey. Um... Basically, for the content that they did and for the way that they decided to handle it, they at least handled it a lot better than some other ones I think I've heard of and stuff like that. So, Mm -hmm. even though it was a bit intense for my personal liking, they did do a good job with it. So, I would probably give it a 7.5 or an 8. I'm kind of tied between the two. 7.5 or an 8. If you're into psychological horror, like, really into it, you would probably like this, but I would definitely not watch this again. Because, <laughs> mainly because it was a bit too intense for me. But, if you're into that kind of thing in a movie, I say go for it, but for me, I probably wouldn't watch it again. I thought it was, like, it was handled well, but this is, like, a kind of a one-and-done movie, in my opinion. Um, but what do you give this out of 10? I genuinely would like to know what you give this. Because I'm curious at this point. What do you give it out of 10, honey? Hmm. Since you've been talking the whole podcast. Um, I give it... I give it a 9.5. Really? Okay, I was not expecting that at all. Um... Okay, then. Well, that's a big rating. Can I ask why you gave it such a 
big rating. Genuinely curious. I like psychological horrors. I like psychological horrors that talk bit that handle topics well. <laughs> oh, tired. Sleepyhead. Uh, yes, that handles psychological horror very well. Okay. Yes. I was just curious because that's such a high rating, but okay. I don't care. You do you. But yeah, um, because of the topic and stuff like that, I don't even know if we're fucking even going to post this, but I would tr- we're going to try and post it. Hopefully we can actually post this. If we somehow don't, we will be in the endless abyss yes. of videos that we probably will never post because that, that has happened. Mm-hmm. We have done videos that we have not posted. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'm Mari. I'm Jay. And we're out.